Greetings to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, and all of you are welcome to this new broadcasting of the Exalted Christ, a Lenten devotional. This is your pastor, Yeti. Today we are hearing new words that Jesus said on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the scripture for today is from Deuteronomy 28, verse 20. You shall be trot a wife, but another man will violate her. You shall build a house, but you will not live in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but you will not use its fruit. What a scripture text. This unusual passage is from a section of scripture dealing with the consequences of this obedience. No, Jesus was never disobedient, but on the cross he took upon himself the sins of all the world. At that point, God could no longer look upon his son because of the sin he had, had taken upon himself. For the first and only time, there was a break in the fellowship between Jesus and the Father. Are you really understand this? For the first time and only time, there was a break in the fellowship between Jesus and the Father. Why do we think it is unusual when there is a break in our fellowship with God when we sin? If we have been redeemed, the relationship cannot change, but the status of the fellowship can. If we have sinned and refused to repent, there will be a break in the fellowship. How can we think otherwise? If God would turn away from his own son when he was covered with the sin of the world, what makes us think we will fare any better? <clears throat> if we want a healthy, close fellowship with our Savior, we must be careful to repent of any sin we find in ourselves. If we refuse to turn from our evil ways, there will be a break in the fellowship. None of us are exempt. None of us are so special or so important in the kingdom that will allow us special dispensation. If Jesus was not exempt, neither will we. We should live life in a constant attitude of self-evaluation and once we find anything displeasing to God, we should immediately pray for forgiveness and repent. These are consequences to disobedience. Let's not make disrupted fellowship with our God. One of them. It's amazing and very deep to listen to these words. You really understand, my beautiful people, what happened on the cross. You really understand what he gave us. He died to give us a new life, abundantly new life, in His mercy. And yes, 
there is pardon for what we do wrong. But never forget that we have an example of prayer, our Father. And if you really pray this very slow, very intense, or study it, you will see that as we forgave, as God has forgiven us, we also have to forgive others. And so it goes on with our own life. The grace of God is upon us. His mercy is upon us because of the death of His Son. But there is a way of walking with Him. It's following Christ and abide in Him. And when something happened, we have to ask truly forgiveness for that and give others forgiveness. This is the way how it goes. Even we are under the grace of God because it's, it's, it is finished. Christ said it on the cross. It is finished. He did the job. And so we are living in the unconditional love of God and His merciful grace. Don't fool around with it. Because God loves you very deeply. Let God love you. And give your life back to Him. As a full living sacrifice to Him. In all you do. In all you think. In all you desire. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your pastor, Yeti. And remember... God loves you, and I do too. Bye.